Hello and welcome back. In the end of the last video, we um, finished up the game's main menu. In this video, we're going to start working on an enemy wave system so that the enemies can come at you um, in mass. The first thing I want to do is create a light because it's kind of hard to work on the scene when it's so dark. So I just right-clicked in the hierarchy and created a directional light. Um, next, I want to... Oh, I already did this. Uh, I right-clicked in scripts in the project view and created a C sharp script called Wave Manager. And all I've done so far is delete the comments that were above start and update. And also in management, create a empty game object called Wave Manager, and then just drag the Wave Manager script onto that. And now um, expand the canvas that we're using for the reticle. And I'm just going to duplicate any of these and drag it down to the center. And we can go ahead and um, disenable the pause canvas, because when we go back into start mode, that'll be enabled when the user hits escape anyway. So we don't, we don't need it to be enabled at the beginning. Um, so now, now we have this duplicated label. Go ahead and set that to center. Center align, center align. And change the name to text wave counter. And then just make it say wave one. Alright, and for some reason it got pushed up to the side, and that's because the anchoring is set to top left. So make sure that's set to center. And that's actually a good example of what happens. See, it, it looks like it's in the center, um, but when things start to resize, um, based on where you have the anchors, things get pushed in weird directions. So like it's in the center now, and here it's in the top left. So um, you, do, you do have to kind of be concerned about where the anchor is. And see now it's not, it's not even in the center anymore. It, it it got out of alignment and then I changed the centering. But it's it's still out of alignment, which is frustrating. So once this is set to zero, I mean once this is set to center, make sure this is at zero. Alright. And now if we want to see what that looks like, we can Give it the direction of light. And I think I want to make that bigger and move it up. Make the tuck make the font like eighty. And then we have to increase the height. Ooh yeah. I, I really like the feel of that text. Yeah, that looks awesome. All right, so now that now that that's there, we're gonna want to show it and hide it um, after certain things happen. So we need a reference to that. So public text, and you'll notice that we don't have the text type listed. And that's because we're not using Unity Engine dot UI. Now we have text, text. And we'll just call this wave label. And I will create a void function called change wave. And this is just going to look for a number. We'll call this int um, wave. And I like the way the number looks when it's spelt out. I think I think that just gives it a nice um, sort of stylistic feel. Um, so we could we could just pass in the whole string, or we could pass in a number and then convert it manually. Um, so I'm going to say if if wave equals 
zero or one. Wave label dot text equals wave one. And this does create a lot more work for us because if the user can get up to like 50 waves, we need a condition for every single one, which I'm perfectly fine with. Wave two, wave two. And I'm not sure if there's like a more efficient way to convert numbers to spelled out numbers. Um, there, there might be a library for it somewhere in the .NET system, but I'm currently unaware of it. Five, six, Oops. Seven, seven. All right, and if you don't want to type all this out, you can just copy and paste it from my code on GitHub. So we have seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, and I, th I think I'm going to cap it out at twelve, um, and and we can just make the waves exponentially harder as we go. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right, so now when, when we change the wave, we just have to pass in a number, and then it'll update the number on the screen. Uh, wave label dot set enabled. Oh. Um, actually, we, if it was a game object, we could say enabled. Or set active. That, that's what I was looking for. So we could use dot, dot game object dot set active, or we could just set the text to nothing, like that. Uh, I think I'm going to go that route. I'm just going to have this always active. Um, but when I want to clear it, I'm just going to set the text to an empty string. So void hide wave text wave label dot text equals nothing. So when we want it to pop up, we give it some text. When we want to hide it, we just set it to nothing. And um, so. Let's create a variable for how long we want the text to be on the screen. And we'll just call that text interval. And by default, it'll be 1. And then after we update the label, we can just use the invoke function. Invoke um, string method name that is change. All right, sorry. Hide wave text, and the time is text interval. And just so we can test it, I'm going to call this uh, when the user presses the Q key. If input dot get key down key code dot Q change wave and we can pass in whatever value we want so let's let's start off with one int i equals one pass in a one like that and increase i so so j just to test it out when we hit q um, it'll call this function with the value of one and then it'll increase i and then when we hit Q again, it should call the same function with the value of 2. 
So now we can run through the values and see if everything works correctly. So go ahead and hit play. Hit Q. And something breaks. And that's because we haven't set the um, wave label, which is here. So now we hit Q, it says wave 1. We hit Q again, still wave 1. Oh, and that's because um, in this function I, I'm setting i back to 1 every single frame, so we can do that. So it says wave 1, and it says wave 2, wave 3, wave 4. All right, and then after we pass wave 12, it doesn't say anything. And now I'm just going to comment this out. I think it's Control-Shift-C. No, that's not right. Um, format. Toggle line comments. Oh, Control-Alt-C. So to comment that all out in one file swoop, you just do Control Alt C, and then save, and then we can just delete this part. Uh, I'm going to cut this video off here. In the next video, we'll start spawning in enemies, and we'll actually take advantage of our wave system that we just built.